Hey everyone, this is Brady, the Game Dev Artisan. In today's video, we're going to begin our new series in the Godot Fundamentals. We'll cover an introduction of Godot, how to download and install, we'll go over the interface and the sections that we want to be familiar with, and the main concepts of working in Godot, scenes, nodes, the scene tree, and signals. By the end of the video, you'll have what you need to know to get started with a project and understand where to begin inside the Godot engine. Godot is a free open source game engine that has been growing in popularity. You can make 2D, 3D games, as well as applications. It has a great set of tools and features to simplify your development. It's community developed and maintained. It has a user interface that's friendly. It has its own programming language called GDScript. Because it's community developed, there are also other programming languages that are supported as well. The engine includes features such as built-in physics engine, animation tools, audio support, custom scripting, asset management, and more. One of the key strengths of Godot is its emphasis on a node-based scene system. The game elements are represented as nodes, which can then be organized into a nice hierarchy to create complex scenes and gameplay mechanics. This node-based approach simplifies the management and interaction of your game objects, which makes it easier to create and organize your game content. Godot supports multiple platforms, including Windows, Mac OS, Linux, iOS, Android, and HTML5. This allows developers to target a wide audience and it additionally provides a rich set of import and export options, making it compatible with various file formats and allowing for easier integration of custom assets and resources. With it being open source, it has an active and supportive community that shares tutorials, assets, and knowledge, and it makes it a valuable resource for developers of all skill levels. Overall, Godot is a versatile game engine that provides developers with the tools and flexibility needed to create high-quality games across different genres and platforms. To get started with Godot, we'll head over to the GodotEngine.org website. And from here, we'll go to the download latest or download long-term support. The latest at the time of this recording is 4.0.3, and the long-term support is 3.5.2. I'm going to go ahead and click on the 4.0.3, and I am on Windows, so it'll prompt me with the Windows download or the Windows.net download with C Sharp support. You also can navigate to the download for Godot 3 for that long-term support. You can also get the previous versions on GitHub or their mirrored repo on tuxfamily.org. Once you have that downloaded, you can go ahead and open up that archive and extract the contents into a folder of your choice. So once you've extracted your application binary, go ahead and launch the editor. And once it launches, you'll be brought to the uh, project manager. The project manager gives you a great list of your local projects that are installed on your system. You can also navigate to the asset library projects tab where you can search for templates and other projects and demos uh, and just navigate to those and install those locally as well. In our case here, we've already created a Godot fundamentals project and I've filtered it down here under the filter option. You can also sort by last edited, by name, by the path of the project. And over here you can create new projects, import a project, you can scan directories that might have existing Godot projects, or in our case, we'll just go ahead and edit an existing project. Now, once you open your project, you'll be brought to the 3D main screen. Now, the editor is broken up by its main screens on four tabs. We have our 2D, 3D, script editor, and that asset library we looked at before. In this project, we'll just briefly cover a 2D scene. On the left, we have our dock for the scene and import. On the bottom, we have a file system dock. And on the right side, we have an inspector, node, and history dock. We'll cover each of these separately. At the bottom, we also have a dock with an output, debugger, audio, animation, and shader editor. Depending on the context, there may be additional panels that will show up at the bottom as well. To begin, we'll talk about our scene dock. This is where your scene tree exists and any node that you're working on will be added to that scene tree. Now, if we're gonna compose a basic scene, we will add a root node. In this case, we'll call it world. Now, this can be considered your parent in your tree. You can add a parent-child relationship by either right-clicking on your root node or by clicking the plus button to create a new node. Now, in our case, We'll start with a Sprite 2D. We'll cover the rest of these nodes in a later video. Once you add your node, you'll notice on the right-hand side under our inspector dock, 
that we have some information about our Sprite 2D. Now these sections are broken up by their object properties. Because Godot is a object-oriented language, there is a inheritance to each object. Our Sprite 2D inherits from a Node 2D, and a Node 2D inherits from a Canvas item, and a Canvas item inherits from a Node. You can get more information about each object from Godot's documentation. And you'll notice that the Sprite 2D class has its corresponding inheritance. You can follow this chain back to the root object, which pretty much everything inherits from. Now, this brought us over to our script main screen, which we can again navigate back to our 2D scene and work on our Sprite 2D node. We'll quickly add a texture by dragging the default icon SVG into our texture. Other settings can be modified from within the inspector, such as our offset, the animation details, region, and more. For our case, we'll just click and drag our Sprite 2D scene a little bit further to the center of our screen. Our screen is identified by these borders. This can also be modified in our project settings. Now, because we dragged our Sprite 2D node into the center screen, you'll notice that our offset didn't change. This offset is relative to the sprite itself. Now, we'll cover in more detail later about our nodes and the corresponding properties. For now, we just want to go ahead and test that our scene composition works. We'll start by saving our scene. We'll call this world.tscn. And you'll notice this is the resource path, which is our root directory for our project. Go ahead and save that. And by default, our game does not know which is our default scene. If we were to try and hit play, it's going to ask us if we want to set this as our current scene or if we want to select a separate scene. In our case, this is our only scene. We'll go ahead and select current. Now, once your game loads, you'll see that our sprite is rendering right in the center of our screen, just as we would expect. So back in our editor, let's go ahead and discuss a little bit more about our scene tree. So our scene tree has a parent-child relationship, which means that this Sprite 2D belongs to this world node. Now, to improve on communication, our parent-child relationship has access downstream. Best practice teaches us that you should always communicate directly with your children, but your children should not communicate directly back up. That's where the signal mechanism comes into play. We select our Sprite 2D node and click on our Node tab within the node doc. You'll notice that under signals, we have a couple of signals in each of these categories. Signals are a type of observer pattern that are emitted from an object depending on the context. In our case, things like the frame changing or when the texture changes, canvas items can tell you when they're drawn or hidden, and, and many more. You can also create custom signals as well. We'll cover signals more in a later video. Now in the node panel here, we also have this groups tab. We'll cover groups in a later video, but just know that you can manage a variety of different groups that allows for accessing your nodes in a variety of ways. Inside our history tab, you can quickly navigate between changes that you've made to your node. This is great for undoing changes that you may have unintentionally made. On the left panels, again, back to our scene tree, if we have our icon selected in the file system, we can come up here next to the scene tree and click the import doc. Now, importing assets is a more complicated topic, but just know that there are different settings based off the different type of asset that you're importing. And those import settings can be predefined and set as defaults. If you're working on a pixel art game, for example, you may want that crisp pixel art look. And import settings is where you would change that. And again, at the bottom here, we have our file system doc. Uh, any asset that we see in our resource folder will show up here. This is great for organizing your project in a logical way and allows for navigating things in a much easier fashion. You can also do things such as filtering based off keywords, folders, and some sorting options as well. We've got a great start with the new project and have briefly covered scenes and nodes, as well as identified the docs and screens that we'll be using. If you found this video helpful, please leave a like and let us know in the comments any aspects of Godot that you'd like to be featured in a future video. Subscribe and click the bell to be notified when new videos are posted.
and join us next time as we cover some scene composition in more detail and take a look at more nodes and their properties. Happy coding.